this is basically just unmatched, but we're all working together and playing against a common foe. Uh, this the, game, the full title is Unmatched Adventures, yes. Tales to Amaze. Right, so Tales okay. to Amaze is kind of this pulpy, uh, like, you know, dime store, comic book noir vibe. So we've got the Mothman and the Martian Invaders, I guess some B-movies thrown in there for good measure. Uh, and then Unmatched Adventures is what they're going to call the cooperative versions of the game. Oh, the okay, gotcha. Now, what's cool is any of the characters that come in this game that we can play as, not the villains. The villains are run by the game's AI. Right. But any of the characters that come with this game can also be played in normal head-to-head unmatched. And the maps can also be used for normal head-to-head unmatched. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of fun stuff. Nice. Uh, you can also mix and match characters from any set in cooperative mode. So Kyle is going to be playing as Nikola Tesla. That- that's me. Uh, he is a character from the game, uh, from the Adventures game. So new character. He's super fun. So uh, Tesla's really fun. He's ranged, and he has these coils. You're going to start with one coil charged. Stop cheating already. You've got two coils up. Flip a coil over, Kyle. Where, uh, there you, well, you, cheated. you handed them to me this day. I did. I was playing this. I was playing this bit an hour ago. Uh, and now that I've delivered, I can go home. Uh, so you're going to have the ability to charge these coils. And when the, to- the coils are charged, you can kind of spend them down, a little bit like Beowulf's Rage, to do all these really cool effects. Okay. Also, though, it might behoove you to keep your coils charged, because at the start of your turn, any opposing fighters that are adjacent to you get zapped for one, and you have the choice to move them up to one space away, if both your coils are charged. Nice. At the end of your turn, you can always charge one coil. You also have schemes and stuff that will allow you to charge more coils than that. Cool. Super fun character. Very straightforward. Awesome. All cool. the characters, I will say, in this in this cooperative game that they included, really solid characters. And uh, Dr. Lee Sattler, who has made an appearance on this game board before, she's got insight tokens. So every time she or Dr. Malcolm move, uh, you place an insight token under them. You've got a supply of five. The more insight you have on the board, the better. Uh, It allows you to regen health with certain cards, hit harder, defend harder. Uh, So she's great, super, super fun character. (laughs) <laughs> We've also got Luke Cage from the, I believe, the first Marvel set to be uh, oh, released, which was uh, Redemption Row. Luke Cage is great. He's super straightforward character, hits really hard. He's got Misty Knight as a ranged sidekick. He also has an awesome special power, which is he always takes two less damage. Even if you don't play a defense card, when you take damage, you take two off the damage that you're taking. Hell so yeah. scheme damage or after combat effect damage still affects you at full, but combat damage you're going to mm. subtract two every time because you've got skin like titanium. And then I'm playing Whoa. a guilty pleasure character tonight. It's Buffy Summers. She has a choice of sidekicks, Xander or Giles, which is kind of fun. I'm picking Xander tonight. Okay. You'll see the characters we're playing against discarding. It's not necessarily bad, but it's not as powerful as when you're playing against human beings. So uh, Giles, her other sidekick, has a lot of discarding schemes. Xander just hits, and we just need to be hitting these guys tonight. And I noticed these are all post-season six characters. Yes, they're, I believe it's the comic book art. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, I, well, I guess, see, well, spoiler alert, he just loses his eye in the last season. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, Buffy, that's one of the first license sets, uh, maybe even the first set of this that got released. So a lot of people see them as weaker characters. I still think they're super fun in free-for-all or team-ups. Buffy's power is that she can move through opposing fighters, and I think that's going to be really helpful for us because we've got a lot of minions on the board. So with that being said, also move of three, which doesn't hurt. Um, let's get to the villains and the minions. Villains are to heroes as minions are to sidekicks. So we've got four minions on the board because there's four players. They each have 10 health, and they're each going to do different nasty things to us. We've got Skunk Ape, Ant Queen, The Blob, and The Jersey Devil. Ooh. Yeah, pretty spooky stuff, gang. So I'll start with The Blob. The Blob has these acid tokens, which are kind of like Moldoon's traps. Uh, they don't stop movement. But they do uh, deal one damage when we land on them. Now, Kyle, say you're on that and you've taken your damage. We can move through you because we're all on the same team, and we wouldn't take damage because you're kind of covering the acid. Yeah, I Obviously. act as a floor mat for exactly. everybody else to step. So let's get Kyle on that acid. <laughs> yeah, and that's let's your job. Kyle. Keep him there. <laughs> So at the end of the round, and I'll discuss the round momentarily, 
Uh, the power that the blob does is that the blob puts down one acid token underneath him or her. Uh, there's six of them in the supply. Or it. Or it I, whatever. More likely it. Yeah. Uh, once all six acid tokens are out, the supply is empty. Acid tokens do stay on the board after the blob dies, though, so that sucks. Mm. Uh, the Jersey Devil is so annoying. He makes us discard cards if we're in his zone at the end of the round. Ooh. We also discard cards, I believe. I've only played it with him once at this point, so I might need to double check this, but I think it's based on the threat level. So, like, if threat level is five and we're in his zone at the end of the round, we're discarding five cards from the top what? of our deck, which That's is insane. Horrible. It's really bad. So we want to kill the Jersey Devil uh, fast if we can. Okay. The Ant Queen has extra initiative cards that she's going to mix into the deck uh, that are very annoying. Uh, I also don't like... I don't like any of these characters. I'm like, uh, th these all suck. Weird. Uh, the Skunk Ape uh, just hits you for damage equal to the threat level if you're adjacent to him at the end of the round. So you want to be cautious about being in the Jersey Devil zone at the end of the round, and you want to be cautious about being in the skunk or next to the Skunk Ape at the end of the round. Now, we don't have to kill any of these guys to win, but... Killing them makes the game a little bit easier for us. Right. Yeah. Cool. We got to kill Mothman. Got to kill the Mothman to win. So the Mothman's the big old bad. He's going to be putting these doom tokens on the bridges. Apparently oh, the Mothman hates bridges, or so I'm told. <laughs> uh, as these doom tokens accumulate, it's going to make a lot of the hits he gives us harder. It's also going to make the threat track go up faster. You'll see when we play the game. Uh, but he's going to be dumping threat tokens on bridges and just being his bad, nasty self. All of these characters, when their initiative card is revealed, they're gonna move up to three spaces to the nearest uh, hero or sidekick. Uh, if somebody's adjacent, they just attack that person, but move up to three otherwise. If there's a tie, we get to pick where they go. Okay. Uh, I used to think it'd be uh, better if it was randomized, and then I actually played this game, and I was like, oh no, it's good we get to pick. It's good we get to pick. It's very <laughs> challenging if they're going random. Uh, so it's really it's a really simple mechanic. They basically just move to the closest person, tie, we choose. If they can't reach anyone, we just move the threat track up one and move on to the next person in the initiative lineup. Uh, that almost sounds worse. Yeah, in a way it is, because that threat track, like any good cooperative game, the threat track hurts. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So cool. uh, every time the threat track gets all the way up to destroying a bridge, uh, we take the lowest numbered bridge out of the game. Uh, once a bridge is removed, we can't move as though those spaces are adjacent. Uh, okay. And we place it up here, and you're going to see all these horrible, nasty effects that get activated when destroyed bridges get put up top. When four bridges get destroyed, Mothman wins. If we all get killed, Mothman wins. The only way we win is if we kill the Mothman before any of that happens. Okay. There's one other thing I want to talk about on this map, which are the bridges. You'll see as you look at them that each bridge, which are randomly placed, have a special power on them. Also, there are Doom Tokens, as I mentioned, that will accumulate. So say I maneuver, and I end here. If I end next to a bridge on a maneuver action, uh, I can discard a card from my hand, and two things will happen. One is that we will activate the effect on the bridge, which is something that's helpful to us. And the second thing is the boost value of the card will take off that many Doom Tokens from that bridge. So we, oh, okay. Yeah, so we, it's a way we can manage some of the Doom supply that's going on the bridges and also get some helpful effects as we play the game. There's not much more to say than that. On our turns, we just play as normal and match. So two actions, we can either maneuver, which is drawing a card, adding it to your hand, and then moving up to your movement value. If you want to move more, you can always boost by throwing a card away and adding the small circular number to your movement. We can attack if we're in range to attack. Kyle, you're uh, ranged, so you can attack anyone in the same zone. The rest of us have to attack uh, by being next to somebody connected by a line because we're melee. Oh, right. your sidekick is also ranged. Okay. We also play schemes as an action. Schemes, you just throw them down, read what they say. Say, do what they say. Mm -hmm. If we ever run out of cards on our deck, we're exhausted. Every time we would need to draw a card, we would take two damage. So that means maneuvering, you take two damage. Card effects that let you draw cards, you take two damage per card. When you maneuver, you draw a card. You and, always have to draw a card and, first. And, and then you get to move. Whatever your move Yeah, it's kind is. of a two parter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, the villains don't ever exhaust. So we go through their decks. Each villain is going to have a card in their deck called Deception, which is a defense value of zero and an attack value of zero. How we win this is going to also depend on us being very clever about trying to get down to the deception card. Yeah. Because that's when you really want to wallop them with a big hit. Um, when deception is discarded, we take all of their cards, it can't be canceled, and we shuffle them all back together and create a new deck for them. So we'll never be exhausted. Um, oh, one other thing. I always forget stuff when I'm explaining this game. Oh, we can have as many cards as we want in our hand between turns, but at the end of your turn, you do have to discard down to seven. Okay. So try to avoid that if possible. And uh, 
And that's it. That's the game. Hey, thanks for hanging out. If you want to spend more time with us, do us a favor. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and most importantly, head on over to twitch.tv slash bnbtabletop and give us a follow there. We play board games live every Sunday night at 5 p.m. Pacific time on a show we call The Board and Barrel. And we like to keep things interactive. You guys can influence what happens throughout the course of a game with our buff and nerf house rules. You can also make predictions on how things are going to pan out, play virtual bingo for a chance to win a free board game of your own, and heckle us and stuff from the chat. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you Sunday night.